Well, the fly I'm going to tie now is we nickname, we called a frisky fly. This is a nymph. Uh, I've been involved with World, World Fly Fishing Championships and Fly Fishing Team USA since 1996. And we've picked up a variety of interesting fly patterns from around the world. This one appeared in 2001. It's not anything fancy. In fact, it's a very simple little nymph. But it's, at this point, proven to be a consistent fish catcher. Uh, early season, mid season, late season, and wherever in the world you'd like to fish it. Sweden, Slovakia, US, anywhere. It's, uh, and what it is, is it's basically a midge pattern of uh, basic design. It fits within uh, an interesting category and it works. You can tie them from 12s to 18s. Uh, it's a 1x long nymph type hook that I'm using. This is a Mustad 3906B, but you can use any variety of other hook brands that are in approximately this length. Well, you can use whatever color bead you'd like, gold bead, silver bead, copper, black, anything. They all work. Preference may be to gold, but maybe not. Um, we picked up this fly in Sweden in 2001. Uh, it was given to me by the captain of the South African uh, fishing team. He picked it up at a shop in a small town in Sweden where we were fishing and had no idea what the name was, but it was uh, something that worked extremely well for their team and we started using it. Um, never did find out what the real name of it was. Uh, when we got home, I tried to match the dubbing and the like and the only thing we could come up with that was the closest to it was the fur combings from our family uh, tortoiseshell cat, which is a three-colored cat. And this worked out just to be the right combinations of multicolors. And since then, this fly has become a standard for Team USA in all the places that they fish. And it seems to catch fish fairly consistently wherever you'd like to go fish it. That's what makes it a good fly. It's simple enough. and we called it as a result of the name of the family cat who gave up its dubbing for this fly, the frisky fly. Now, I put a bead on this hook, and this is a size 12. I'll put a little lead wire behind here, and you know, four or five wraps of lead wire. This is a stop measure for making sure my bead doesn't migrate anywhere after the fly is tied. This isn't a real thick, heavy fly, so you have trouble with Every now, I have trouble every now and then with beads anyway going somewhere where I didn't want them. We'll tighten these few wraps of lead wire up here. Push them right up behind. We'll use a tan 6 aught thread and secure this. Put a little tail on here of um, fox squirrel, or you could use hare's mask. One of the items that this fly had that was just a little odd, and it has become a little different, and it's become a standard for our, for a lot of our fly pattern nymph patterns, and we're under the illusion, correct or incorrect, that they are a little more effective because of it. And it's going to have two strands, and only two strands, of crystal flash that go under the tail. That will be the first thing you put on, pearlescent crystal flash. And it will be relatively short. Don't want it longer than the tail. I'll take a little bit of either hare's mask or fox squirrel body, and we'll use, um, there's a piece of fox squirrel, and what we're going to use is uh, just the guard hairs. We'll take a little clump of those. Tie those in as a relatively, nymphs generally have relatively short little tails. Now this will have a crystal flash rib on it. So we have two things to do. 
Crystal Flash is not very durable material, so anything I put Crystal Flash ribbing on, and I'm going to put the Crystal Flash on on the side away from me. Reason is I'm going to wrap this clockwise, right, the same way the rest of the materials go, and the material will get to go underneath the hook, and it'll be less likely to fall off. Okay, anyway, Crystal Flash is a relatively weak, flimsy material, and if I just use the Crystal Flash, either on the first or second fish, the Crystal Flash rib will break, and the fly becomes suddenly much less effective. So I'm going to rib it with some monofilament. This is just some leftover tippet material. Um, in this case, it's 5X. You could use 5X, 6X, 4X, whatever fits with the fly that you're using. And this I'm going to tie on on the side towards me so that I, I'm going to have them going in opposite directions. And here's the fur from a little dubbing from the famous cat. It looks a little bit like hair's mask, but it doesn't have, it has a little more orange in it and a little more other colors uh, that you might find on a tortoise shell cat. But you can also make, come up with it with a similar color dubbing by, by uh, working with some, some hair's mask, making sure you get enough of the face of the hair in there so that it is, uh, gets enough black highlights. You try to find a little bit of orangish, and it's a just kind of one of those combo multicolored dubbings. We'll dub this on fairly thin and wrap it forwards. I'm going to run out of dubbing, so we'll add just a little bit more. We'll end up right at the back of the bead. <coughs> First item was the crystal flash. It started on the other side. We'll wrap it under the hook and we will do three, four, five, six wraps. You get away with five is, works just fine, but we want to keep them fairly evenly spaced. Cut off the excess now to make sure that our fly stays together. Reverse wrap it with this monofilament. The monofilament doesn't detract from the actual fly in weight or color, but it will hold it together. And we're going to lose this on the bottom or in a tree before the fish chew it up. Cut off our excess and give it a little whip finish. A simple little fly, but one of the more effective all-around, all-purpose nymphs that I've run into in a long time. Hopefully it'll work that well for you guys.